Egyptians, these magicians, these soothsayers, they understood that. And they said, Pharaoh, there's no way we can undo this. This is the finger of God. God's power was being put on display here. It is demonstrated in every one of the plagues. What we begin to see here is that the finger of God controls the dust of the ground. Think about that. Not the hand. Not the hand plus the arm. Not the hand plus the arm plus the shoulder. Just the finger of God controls the dust of the ground. And what is dust? Dust is the most minute thing visible to the naked eye. What, so what were, what were these Egyptian magicians saying? Why did they come to realize that not only Pharaoh needed to realize, but that the Israelites needed to realize as well, is that the finger of God controls all things within the universe. Even the most minute things. The very building blocks of matter and energy. When we begin to think about it, look, think about it this way. The finger of God controls all particles. The finger of God controls all energy. The finger of God controls all forces. The finger of God controls all electrical impulses. The finger of God controls all matter. The finger of God controls all electrons. The finger of God controls all atoms. The finger of God controls all chemicals. The finger of God controls all protons. The finger of God controls all gas. The finger of God controls all neutrons. The finger of God controls all DNA. The finger of God controls all cells. The finger of God controls all life, both animal and vegetable. Whatever the most minute particle or energy is that is out there is controlled by the finger of God. It was created by God. No scientist in a lab could create something from nothing. They have to create something from things that already exist. And so we see the power of God demonstrated in the plagues and then we see that he is in control of the very dust of the ground and his finger controls. And if his finger controls the most minute particle, then his finger truly controls all things. God's power is demonstrated. It is on display in the plagues. As these plagues continue to happen, God is demonstrating his power over everything that the Egyptians held sacred, everything that they worshipped, everything that they revered. The sun, the ground, crops, the Nile River, all these things. God's power is demonstrated to the Egyptians and to the Israelites. God still demonstrates his power to us every day. The question is, do we allow his power to be demonstrated in our lives and through our lives and how we conduct ourselves? Not only is his power demonstrated, but his providence, God's providence is evident in the plagues. It is his finger alone that can save the Israelites were spared from many of the things that the Egyptians were experiencing. The, the, the Egyptians would look into the part of Egypt that the Israelites lived in and occupied, and they were not experiencing the pain and the suffering of the Egyptians. They weren't experiencing the discomfort. They weren't experiencing the plagues. And so God's providence is evident in the fact that His finger alone can say. Remember, every time that Moses came and told Pharaoh why he was 
asking for the release of the Israelites and simply let my people go where we can go and we can worship the way God has told us to worship, where God has told us to worship, Pharaoh would, would say no. He would not hearken unto them. He would harden his heart toward the Lord. And the Egyptians would pay for his decision and what he would say. So we see the providence of God on display because his finger alone can save. His finger alone can redeem. It wasn't Moses that was going to save the nation of Israel. It wasn't Moses that was going to redeem the nation of Israel. It wasn't Moses who was going to deliver man from Egyptian bondage. It was God. And it ultimately all points to what Jesus did for us at Calvary. It is only by the shed blood of Jesus Christ and Him being the perfect sacrifice for our sin that we can experience salvation, that we can know what it's like to be redeemed and to be delivered. And that is why we can celebrate. That is why we sing the song of the redeemed. That is why we are to be active in carrying the message into world. When we begin to think about the providence of God and how it's evident in the plagues, not only can his finger alone save, redeem, and deliver man, but it is his finger alone that can look after the very hairs on a person's head. The very hairs on a person's head. He looks. He knows. He sees. He's watching. He knew what the nation of Israel had been going through as they were in bondage in Egypt. He knew how Pharaoh had been treating them. He knew how they had been disrespected and they had been taken advantage of. And he knew all these things. God heard their cries out of Egypt and sent Moses to tell them, I am that I am will deliver you. God's purpose is accomplished through the plagues because Pharaoh will ultimately see the Egyptians will eventually learn that there are not many gods, lowercase gods. But there is one God. There is Jehovah. There is Yahweh. There is the great I Am. You see, there's not one God who controls the weather and another God who controls the water and food supply and then another God that protects and looks after our welfare. But there is one God that does all those things perfectly, decently, and in order. There is one Lord who is the God of the universe. He is the one that we worship. He is the one that we serve. He is the one that has redeemed. He is the one that is rescued. He is the one who is saved. And he sent his son to die on the cross so that whosoever calleth upon the name of the Lord can be saved. That's why the Israelites were to be living a life that honored and glorified God even in the midst of what was going on in Egypt because they were to be displaying who God was to the nation of Egypt. And as they were taken out of Egypt and being led toward the promised land, they were still to be a light in the darkness. They were still to be an example to the pagan nations around them of who God is. Not who he was, not who he will be, but who he is. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's what the Bible tells us. He is God. Is he God in your life only on Sunday, only on special occasions, or is he God of your life every day? Does he guide you? Does he lead you? Do you listen to his word? Do you listen to his instruction? Do you hear the guidance of the Holy Spirit and respond to what he is telling you to do? 
We see here in verse 19 that the magician said unto Pharaoh, this is the finger of God. They basically told Pharaoh, you're not going to stop this. There's nothing we can do to stop this. We cannot do what Moses did and what Aaron did. We cannot counteract what they have done. You've got to acknowledge that this is the finger of God. <clears throat> and Pharaoh was a stiff-necked, hard-hearted individual who refused to listen to what anyone was saying to him. And he hardened his heart toward the Lord. He refused to acknowledge that there is one Lord who is the God of the universe who saves, redeems, and delivers. And we see the price that not only he would ultimately pay, but what pain and suffering his people went through because of it. He would not acknowledge that there was only one living and true God. And part of that had to do with the fact that Pharaoh wanted all the admiration for himself. He wanted everybody to bow down to him. He wanted everybody to pay respect to him and to worship him. And he knew that if he acknowledged that the Israelites' God was the one living and true God, how that would sound and what that would make him look like. And what we see here ultimately is that it is God's finger, it is his power alone that controls all things. Everything is perfectly created by God. The earth is rotating the way it's supposed to be rotating. The planets are where they're supposed to be. Everything has been placed exactly where it should be placed so that we can survive on earth. So that we can live for Christ so that we can make a difference, so that we can make an impact in our world. Even the very dust of the earth, the most minute things of the earth are controlled by the one living, awesome, mighty, powerful God. God's power is demonstrated in the plagues and God's power is on display throughout Scripture and God's power is still on display today. It is still being demonstrated today in our lives and through our lives. And that is why we gather and worship as the church. That is why we desire to experience times of refreshing and revival. That is why we evangelize and desire to see People saved, surrendering their lives to Christ. We can be thankful for His providence in our lives and the lives of others. We can be thankful that God's purpose was accomplished through the plague. His plan is still being accomplished today. His purpose is still being accomplished today. And He uses those of us who have surrendered our lives to Him to accomplish those purposes. And God's people are protected in the plagues. We saw that, and we'll look at that more in the coming weeks. We can be thankful for His protection today. We can be thankful for His watch care today. We can be thankful for His mercy and His grace today. As we think about Exodus chapter 8, and we begin in verse 16, and we make it to verse 19, and we see what took place with the plague of lice. And we hear what the magicians say unto Pharaoh. This is the finger of God. Let's remember that he is God. He is the one true God. And it is he that we have placed our faith and trust in. And there are those out there tonight who need to place their faith and their trust in the God who controls everything with a finger. Let's pray. Lord, we come to you.